The ground reference maneuvers in this program are designed to help develop your ability to compensate for wind drift and control the airplane while your attention is diverted outside. Many of the skills you'll learn in these maneuvers can be applied to your routine flying and improve your feel for the airplane. The first step in executing any ground reference maneuver is to determine from which direction the wind is blowing. This can be done by noting the position of the wind sock at the departure airport, the runway in use, or the direction the wind is blowing trees and dust. Another method you can use is to fly a 360 degree constant airspeed constant bank turn. The difference between your starting and ending points gives you the general idea of the wind direction. Let's begin with a look at rectangular courses. The procedures you use to fly a traffic pattern are very similar to those you'll use to fly a rectangular course. The exception is that you'll fly at a constant altitude between 600 and 1,000 feet AGL. As the name implies, you'll be flying a rectangle around reference lines on the ground. The objective is to maintain an equal distance from the boundary throughout the maneuver. This distance should be about one quarter to one half mile. Ideally, one leg of the pattern should be directly downwind. This allows you to fly one segment with the wind, another directly into the wind, and two legs with a crosswind. The preferred entry to the rectangular course is on the downwind leg in straight and level flight. At this point, the ground speed is higher than on any other leg in the pattern, and little or no crab angle is needed. When you're opposite the corner of the field, start the turn to crosswind. Since the ground speed is high, the initial bank angle is steep. But to maintain a constant distance from the field, the bank is gradually reduced as your ground speed slows during the turn. The turn to the crosswind leg is completed so that a crab angle is established into the wind. Maintain a crab angle that will allow you to fly a straight line at an equal distance from the field. The turn to upwind is begun when you're opposite the end of the field. During the turn, your ground speed slows as you head into the wind. Therefore, the angle of bank gradually decreases. This leg is flown directly into the wind, so no crab angle is required and your ground speed is slow. During the turn to the next leg, your ground speed gradually increases. This means the angle of bank must increase to maintain a constant distance from the field. On this crosswind segment, the wind tends to drift the airplane toward the field. Therefore, the turn is completed so that a crab angle is established into the wind. Maintain this crab angle until you reach the end of the crosswind leg. As you turn downwind, your ground speed increases. This means the bank angle needs to increase gradually throughout the turn to maintain a constant distance. Your ability to compensate for the wind during a turn is an important element of flying a rectangular course properly. 